So Jan, up until you were 13 years old, you were raised by a single parent immigrant mm -hmm. in your household, you and your brother. Yes. What sort of challenges did that present for you? Some of the biggest challenges were, uh, you know, number one, since our mom was from another, is from another country, she uh, didn't understand some of the, the language, the culture, um, she was still adjusting to that. Um, we didn't have the same resources as other kids. There was no help on our homework. Um, my brother and I had to, to figure it out. Um, a lot of times we were home alone because she had to work hard to support us. And so how do you think that, that shaped who you are today? Definitely made me an independent thinker. Um, if I am faced with a problem, I'm going to seek out the answer. I'm going to tap into every resource I have around me in order to find out that answer and um, keep moving forward. So flash forward about 15 years, you're 28 years old, you're a stay-at-home mom, uh, mother of two, and you decide after a break in college that you're going to go back to school uh, to earn your degree. Why was that important to you to do that? I was helping my children with their homework, and of course, like all kids do, grumble through homework, and uh, trying to communicate to them how important it is to work hard at their education, to continue to pursue their education, that it opens up a lot of opportunities um, for them in the future. And I got to thinking about, well, I didn't complete my bachelor's degree. I need to probably do that. And now is a great time to show my children um, that I value it as well and that I'm going to work hard and uh, get my degree. Was that, how big of a challenge was that when you're raising two kids and also attending college and trying to, to finish your degree? Well, it, it probably is not as challenging for others, that, uh, for, for, my, for me as it was for others. I did have a lot of help with my mother for, with the kids, um, but there were a lot of, you know, making sure the kids are fed, put them to bed late nights, working on homework, reading those assignments, trying to keep up with my course load. And then as soon as you finished your bachelor's degree, then you decided to pursue a master's. Well, I, I did have a little bit of a break. Um, I moved here to San Angelo and was a stay-at-home mother for a while. And I kind of got to a point where, well, now let's, once again, we're going to have this conversation about our education with my kids. And I wanted to get my master's degree. And so um, full-time mom at that point and uh, three kids and decided to go for it. And so was that... Was it the same motivation that you wanted to show to your kids how important education was and that you really have to work in order to, to attain that? Absolutely. Um, at, at, for any non-traditional student, you, balancing work and for me, stay at home, my kids and, and uh, full-time everything else on top of full-time school, um, I uh, wanted them to see it's, it's not something you just decide that's what you want to do because you have to. It's something you have to want and continue to push yourself to, to go for it and be successful. Um, I really wanted them to see that as well. And I was getting to a point, well, okay, my kids are getting older. I'm going to want a career for myself. Um, I wanted to make sure I had options when I got to that point. And so with about a week until you graduated with your master's degree, you landed a job at Goodfellow Air Force Base. Tell us about I got, that. I landed a position with Park University um, as the campus center director for their Goodfellow Air Force Base uh, campus center. And so what did that job entail? What I really love about that job is to um, be able to work with uh, active duty uh, military members as well as uh, veterans and um, retired military members on pursuing their education. and. One of the greatest challenges that um, they have is, is they're highly mobile. So because they move all over the country, all over the world, sometimes uh, reaching that a, a goal, attaining a bachelor's degree is quite a challenge for them. And I loved helping them map that out, um, helping them find that uh, quick, um, route to completing their degree based on all those other challenges they they had from credits from other places um, also how do you how do you take your classes when you're on a ship in the middle of the ocean um, I had phone calls you know ad academic advisory calls with a, a gentleman that's in the middle of the Pacific 
um, time zone challenges and, and um, helping them pull all that together um, to achieve a goal. And yet, according to your nomination forms, you had great success in doing that. Park University has sites all over the country and you were one of their top performers. Yes, I was uh, consistently one of their top performers. Um, they have 40 campus center directors and I usually was in the top three, top five um, as far as uh, percentages. And so what do you attribute that to? Uh, relationship building. Um, I didn't think about any kind of numbers. I thought about the individual in front of me, the parent, the soldier who wants that degree um, and wants that help to uh, be successful at achieving that. And so now today, you're the business operations coordinator at Time Clock Plus. So people may not realize exactly what it is that happens out at Time Clock Plus. Tell us what kind of company it is and what, it, what its business is. Absolutely. And um, so we're a time and attendance software company. We um, provide workforce solutions for companies all around the world, um, all, all over the United States, organizations throughout the United States. Um, so a lot of people assume that we have time clocks everywhere, and we, and we do. Um, however, it's primarily the software. Um, we integrate with payroll systems um, to make sure that people are paid correctly and um, to help uh, organizations make sure that they're, they're following all the rules and guidelines that um, are best for their people and their organization. And so as Time Clock Plus's business operations coordinator, what do you do for them? Well, I, I wear very many hats at, at Time Clock. Um, right now, it's, um, I work a lot with project management. I'm a project manager in the professional services department. Um, I also am the education assistance uh, program uh, admin for Time Clock. We have a great uh, education benefits program for our employees. Um, and so the business operations coordinator, I do a lot of work with other departments um, as far as providing uh, training and subject matter experts for our training department and coordinate with our training manager to make sure that that happens. So as you mentioned, one of your responsibilities is you do serve as the company's education assistance program administrator. So tell us about that program. Time Clock Plus, uh, anybody who does not have a degree, associate's degree or bachelor's degree, um, we work with, uh, we, we send our, our employees after a certain amount of time to Howard College or uh, for an associate's degree in um, management information systems. And then uh, once they're done with that, they can go to Park University to pursue a degree, a uh, bachelor's of science in management information systems. Um, so we uh, help them cover those expenses. That is really generous. I think that, that says something about the company's culture. Absolutely. Um, our company uh, it believes in the people that are there, you know, culture is, are, is the people. And um, we constantly like to provide opportunities to develop everyone um, to go towards their best, um, whether it's professionally or personally. Um, we work very, very hard and we like to recognize the time and talent that people bring to our, to our company. And we like to share it with the community as well. So as you and I were chatting before we turned the cameras on, I'm kind of fascinated by Time Clock Plus's culture because I know that the employees there work really, really hard. They work long hours, and yet they are so devoted to that company. I mean, they love it there. What about Time Clock Plus and, and what happens there do you think encourages people to, first of all, work so hard and then to be so loyal to the company? It's all through leadership. We have great leadership. Um, our, our leaders, you know, we, they're trustworthy, they're transparent. They have a clear vision of where we need to go. Um, they are, you know, willing to admit and make mistakes and learn from it, and they allow us to do the same. Um, we are constantly learning, and um, they're very giving there. We are all giving, actually. Um, we like to volunteer all over the place. Um, we're like a family, um, and despite all the hard work that we contribute, we are uh, full of fun. We have a lot of fun factor going on. Uh, today was dressed up like Scott Turner Day, I think, over in sales. So there's a is lot this of people. What Scott Turner wears? Yeah, yes. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is his this is his Friday outfit. No, um, I was not part of that that memo, but I see a lot of uh, Scott Turners uh, throughout the sales floor. Um, but we like to uh, 
make sure that even though we're asking a lot, we're, we're giving a lot um, to, to our, our employees. Well, you mentioned leadership. So mm -hmm. in your mind, how do you define leadership? Oh, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the, the trustworthiness, um, the transparency, um, leadership that has the knowledge, education, and experience to um, inspire others to follow their vision towards success. Tell me about a leader who has influenced or impacted you. Uh, recently, um, in, in the past nine months with Time Clock, it's been Scott Turner. He, um, I, I, I always joke about having these lectures <laughs> with him. Um, I constantly joke as well about being in trouble because I, I, I want to push limits and boundaries and, and um, expand what it is that I can do or what we can do or uh, constantly asking questions. So I get, I sometimes I get a lot of no's. Um, but what I love about Scott is that he allows me to approach him and ask those questions or make those suggestions or toss out those ideas or try something out. Um, and now I refer to them as mentorship moments because even if I, I get a no, I get a reason why and I also get um, some of that education and experience and knowledge that he has to impart. So I really like how he does that and it's very encouraging and it, and it helps me remember that when people are coming up to me and throwing out some ideas um, and suggestions that I'm going to listen and um, whether I agree with them or not, I'm going to just constantly be encouraging and provide that opportunity to continue that conversation. Well, you kind of segued perfectly into uh, my next question because it involves Scott and it involves limits. He wrote in your nomination form that they've yet at Time Clock Plus to find your limit. So what do you think your limit is? I'm, that's a great question. I'm not, I'm not sure. I know that um, being there, I don't, I don't see any limits. I only see possibilities and um, I'm excited about what the future holds and um, I'm excited to see where I'm at 20 years from now with Time Clock. He also wrote that you quote, make things better. So talk about your approach in that regard. How do you, is that something that you're very conscious of? Is just whatever you're involved in trying to make it better? Absolutely. I, um, one of the biggest things I've had to learn, um, especially working with volunteers, and now in a big company, um, is that you have to recognize and appreciate the people around you. And so I always want to make sure I'm smiling, um, I'm approachable, I say hello, um, I say thank you, um, I make sure that I know who my coworkers are, who my team members are. If they're not in my department, I'm gonna go out and meet them. Um, I like to be a part of um, any company-wide initiative that we have going on, or even if I'm one of those people that tosses a company-wide initiative out there uh, to pursue, I like to be a part of that and um, see how it motivates others to, to be a better person, to, to be that engaging, happy, encouraging person. And so maybe that's why you've been chosen to serve on the mission, visions, and values team at, uh, at Time Clock Plus. Yes, I would, I would hope so. <laughs> So, I mean, that's a challenge to think about uh, helping a company sort of shape its, its mission and vision and values, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And um, their mission, vision and values, were, they were written, I guess, probably 20 years ago. And um, it's nice to be part of a company that recognizes, you know what, we've, we've grown, we've changed. And so it's not only a group of leadership that's in there helping with that. They've, they've brought in other members of the company to, to create that team and to to make sure we've got that perspective covered on both sides, that it's a conversation, it's a collaboration, not just a, a leadership team going, this is what it is. So, You mentioned just a moment ago about uh, volunteerism and you serve on the board of the Concho Valley Home for Girls and the Children's Emergency Shelter. What about their mission moves you? The thing that moves me about them is um, they want to make sure that they're providing love and stability for the girls and the children that come through their doors. Um, sometimes uh, these, these kids are in situations that are completely out of their control and they wanna foster um, a level of security for them on all these changes and uh, uh, 
challenges that they face, that there's, there are people out there that care about them. Um, there are people out there that are going to support them and um, want to provide them with every opportunity that other children get who don't have to um, come across some of the circumstances they do. Talk about why those organizations work is so vital to the community. It's vital to the community because we, um, you know, number one, we're one of the few places in Texas um, that can provide the level of support that we provide for a, a, a wide range of children. Um, and uh, we we get phone calls from all over the state asking us to take in kids to help them out. And I think that um, people need to know that there is a, an organization out there that uh, does this type of work. Um, I think sometimes we're very quiet about it, <laughs> um, but we're there. You've also co-chaired the Chamber of Commerce's Goodfellow Appreciation Day picnic. What's the most fun part about being involved with that? I think the most fun part about uh, being involved with that is, is someone who grew up in a military town, um, one of the largest military bases in the free world. Um, I like seeing how much the community pitches in to allow these families to come in and enjoy a picnic um, without the crowds and to come out and have fun with each other and um, to mingle with others, with the other businesses and, and volunteers that are out there with the Chamber of Commerce to help put this on. You know, doing things like making cotton candy, uh, running a rock climbing wall, um, just that interaction and um, how peaceful and fun it seems for all the families to be out there and how much they enjoy it and those conversations that they have. Yeah, I learned through your nomination form, you've been involved in a host of other nonprofit uh, efforts. Why do you feel so moved to uh, involve yourself in so many different things? When I first moved to San Angelo, I was a little overwhelmed about my change in surroundings. And one of the things that I decided to do was to um, become invested. And I started through volunteering. And um, I kept volunteering and volunteering and joining more organizations or jumping in wherever I can to help. And I've discovered how loving and giving San Angelo is and how much of a family it is. So that whenever, um, even if it's not an organization that I serve on regularly, I'm going to help volunteer. If I can help you set up, break down, clean up, um, locate a resource, I'm, I'm going to do it because I think our community comes together really well and is deserving of everyone putting in that kind of effort. Jan, it's a big honor to be one of the 20 under 40. Congratulations. Thank you.